And now that will, well, once it finishes reloading. And now we're back to, you know, the style that it was actually showing before. Uh, yeah, so this is the this is the new default theme for Packer 5.0, which is not yet out. Um, and as you can see down here, I actually uh, I actually have the version that is generated during the package build inserted into the software at build time, so you can always see which version it is. Um, but that's just with Fedora stuff. Like um, this is actually um, a duplicate of a project on our internal OBS that we use that also builds um, not only just RPMs but it also builds Debian packages. So you can see that this is a spec file. It's not trivial and not clean because this is building a kernel module, so everything is horrible um, in your soul when you do it this way. But like, it builds a TKMS sub package. It's got all the main stuff. It has a source package called SDEBS and stuff like that. And we build for Ubuntu. There's some SUSE in here, uh, CentOS, Fedora, kind of you know the whole nice split there. Um, and another example here uh, would be this project here with, wow, I can't see proc dump. So Microsoft's uh, little process dumper program for uh, for Linux, and I just I did I put this together some time ago. Uh, it was pretty. It's a pretty simple one. So like some packages are complicated. This one is literally dead simple. Uh, all it is. The only difference here is that on the Debian side we have to request zlib one g dev. Otherwise we request zlib devil, and it builds just like any other package. Most RPM macros can be added to the environment to be supported and stuff like that. So you can have fairly consistent um, build configurations. Um, but yeah, uh, let's go back to this. So aside from Datto, who else actually uses it? Obviously OpenSUSE does and Pac-Man, which is their equivalent to um, RPM Fusion. So if you're, if you're in the Fedora community, you know RPM Fusion as the one that provides the packages Fedora can't. Pac-Man is SUSE's equivalent. Um, the Mare and Tizen projects, which are um, RPM-based uh, distributions that focus on mobile. Linaro, which focuses on ARM stuff. Um, they have an, uh, an OBS instance that's public. Dell uses OBS to actually build their Linux community packages, though their OBS instance is not public, the repos they publish are. Uh, Collabora, uh, if you know anything about the Debian community, Collabora is a pretty big name there. Um, they actually use an OBS to build all of their stuff. They maintain a uh, 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 fork-ish of, of OBS for that. Uh, one name that I didn't put on here was Endless, and they also use an OBS for actually building their distribution. Um, and VideoLand also uses uh, OBS for building their SUSE packages, but you know, their instance is also not public. Um, but yeah, OBS is awesome. Um, and also, kind of a little plug here, if you're interested in working on our team and doing this kind of stuff, we're hiring. Um, so here's some references and links and also the thing that actually makes the Debian stuff possible is this project called DebBuild. It's a monstrosity of a Perl program that actually can process an RPM spec file, evaluate macros, and actually do proper Debian package builds out of it. So it has some extensions to the RPM grammar to support Debianisms, but otherwise, you know, it, it basically works how you expect it to. Ooh. So uh, that's kind of the end of the prepared presentation part. Uh, questions? Anything? I know I kind of ran through it kind of quickly, but I kind of wanted to make sure everybody had a chance to talk. This isn't so much a question as another uh, similar benef uh, uh, feature I'd like to point out. So I'm maintaining a Windows uh, port of an open source uh, application. I have uh, .exe binaries uh, built from four different build systems. Uh, <laughs> uh, Sigwin, uh, Ming W32 uh, on Windows, uh, 
uh, Visual Studio. And the fourth, which is my favorite, mm. is MingW cross compilation from the OpenSUSE build service. Oh boy. Yeah. There's, there's people maintaining hundreds of, like, you know, MingW32, MingW64 libraries and b some binaries. And it, but the OpenSUSE build service enables me to handle all those dependencies, all those .dll libraries, and build the ultimate.exe file uh, as a package on there. Uh, you know, reliably, I get to build. It creates the build environment and tears it down, and it's in the handling of those libraries too. Yep, it's. Um, we don't really do too much on the Windows ish side for this, but. Um one component of our of our backup and restore product actually involves having a cross-built Windows binary, and we actually do build that through um, our internal OBS system. Although, unlike uh, unlike in your case, we're actually using the Fedora MinGW stack uh, rather than the OpenSUSE one. But yeah, you know, we absolutely do the we do the same thing, and it's a really valuable thing because it makes it so that we can have a very consistent and uh, reliable process for going from start to finish on this. Right. And to fill in the gap of the fact that you have RPMs as output, there's a script out there called download mean WRPM that you know, creates a folder or a zip file from all the all the packages.exe and the little files you care about, including dependencies. Right. And, and in open, our case, we're, we ship the package actually to live on in our appliance, so it doesn't actually matter in our case because the executable has to be on the file system in some way anyway. Right. And ultimately, the OpenSUSE build service does have ideas for how to like generate a setup.exe and all. Oh, yeah. No, they've, they've proposed they've, ideas, at least. There's There's been some bounced around ideas for at least, I think, a year or so um, about how to handle this about automatically unwrapping those things and pre presenting them in that form. Those ideas eventually led to how they handle uh, container images and some of the other stuff like that. But I imagine at some point, if there's enough interest, they'll probably pull around and actually finish the stuff that they were working on for Windows as well. I mean, there was even some uh, thoughts about how to make it so the OBS worker runs on Macs, so it could produce things like Fink or Mac ports things or homebrew packages. Mm -hmm. uh, it the architecture totally allows it because it's actually written in a system, a more or less system independent manner. It's just, you know, time, priorities, and also Apple like gets very angry when you do weird things with their operating system. Yeah, yeah thank you. Any other questions? Uh, great. Uh, let's thank our speaker. Thank you, Neil. Yeah. Uh, so I'd also like to remind everybody once again uh, that there's a party tonight at 7. Uh, and if you've got tickets, then it's going to be the best party ever. Uh, if you can't make it, then you're missing out. But that's, that's totally fine. Did you have any trouble setting up for No, it was easy. I was just surprised that nobody was here. <laughs> <laughs> to help? Yeah, I, I'm surprised too, actually. I, I, just I, I wasn't even sure if the thing was recording or streaming or anything. I streamed like about halfway through. But, uh, I think I got a question, at least. Yeah, I see. There. There's, more of a com there's more of a comment than a question. <laughs> but, yeah, I'm yeah. not terribly surprised. Yeah. I know the, the world conspires against me. Or you had a question. Cool. Yeah, I see. So I, I thought I'd point out that I didn't want to shamelessly promote my own uh, oh, <laughs> application. The application is X to go clients for Oh, yeah, I knew exactly which one you were talking about. about. And Pulse Audio is what I build. I know. That right. How, how did you know? Because your, those projects were the ones I used to figure out how to do it in the first.